Hi everyone, it's JJ here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna share with you my second art journal page. I'm using a Moleskine notebook today instead of the Arteza sketchbook one. You can use any kind of notebook or old book that you have in your stage. If you think that the pages are too thin, you can glue a few of them together and also use some white acrylic gesso to give them more thickness and obviously avoid wetting them too much with liquid media. To avoid disasters, and I have no limit uh, for eventual ideas in progress, I will leave uh, empty pages, one or two, both uh, before and after the pages I'm gonna use today. Let's start now and break this blank page. A great way to do that is to glue a tissue paper. In my case it's a Tim Holtz one with this beautiful text, uh, music, pentagram and few butterfly here and there. There are a lot of tissue paper with different design or just plain that you can personalize using your favorite stamp and your favorite color. I'm going to cut out a large piece of uh, tissue paper to cover my pages, filling the empty spaces with uh, small leftovers, choosing uh, the part that I like most. Tissue paper is also excellent for the collage technique, so it's possible to cover up the gaps uh, with this technique. To glue the tissue paper I'm using a cheap brush and gel medium. I'm spreading the glue without a particular technique, making sure to completely cover up the surface. I put a protective sheet behind to protect the other pages. I'm going to dry the pages with my heat gun and then I can cut out all the excess. Now my page is not blank anymore. I'm going to apply a thin layer of white acrylic gesso to make the patterns on the paper less visible, pushing them more in the background. I think my impatience is evident and for anything that requires drying I will use my faithful embossing gun where possible because using heat on particular products can make bubbles. To color my background I decided to use watercolors, in particular the Aquafloro pens by Nuvo. They are pens with a tip brush and a tank where is the watercolor. Obviously if you have a brush and a palette of watercolors you can use those or any type of colors you prefer. I'm not a watercolorist, so this is not a tutorial on watercolor techniques. Honestly, don't be afraid, their journaling is for everyone. First of all, I wet the surface with some water so the color spreading better. I covered all the surface using a brush. To make the colors darker and more vivid, I'm gonna make several layers, drying with the heat gun between one application and another. So I add water and color, I'm using two blue gradients, dry with my heat gun and again add water, color, dry and so on, ending when I was satisfied. I would like to create a soft background with a gorgeous water splash effect. I'd like to create a soft background with a gorgeous water splash effect. All very random, having fun moving the small pools of water here and there. Once 
once uh, my page uh, is nice and dry with my distress oxide broken china I'm gonna color uh, these uh, areas that are too white for me from the cam they look whiter than they are anyway everything can be fixed Since I used the uh, Distress Oxide ink, I can do one of my favorite techniques by spraying uh, water with a spray. This type uh, of ink reacts, forming uh, this amazing ghost drop effect. One background technique that uh, I can't stay away from is to create some color splashes. I diluted the dark blue I used for the background and uh, with a thin nip brush I spray it here and there. Not satisfied, I do the same thing by diluting uh, white acrylic gesso to create some uh, white splashes, getting a mess all around my working area. But this technique is too fun and uh, I can't stay away from. Another technique not to be missed is the random stamps, which add uh, interest to the background. Today I chose two stamps, one with a musical pentagram, the other with a kind of uh, handwritten text. Here I'm using Cornflower Blue Archival Ink to stamp the musical pentagram. As you can see, I'm not going for a perfect impression, I'm just going randomly doing partial stamps. Don't be lazy and clean your stamps! Thanks to this cleaning tool, I can do it easily and much faster. For the handwritten text stamp, I'm going to use a pink ink pad because, as you will see later on, there will be some pink elements in my focal point. Here is one of the ideas that pop up during the process. Now I can say thank you JJ for having left blank pages before and after the page I'm working on. While I draw lines with the pencil all around the border, I try to explain what I'm going to create. My page will be about spring. This is a season reminding me a sweet poem of sound and colors. So I'm going to create a kind of book pages. Now I'm finishing cutting the pages following the lines that I drew and with this little tool I will distress the edges of the pages. This is a very popular way to get a old look to the paper. If you don't have it, you can use the inner blade of your scissors to scratch the paper. But if you do that, be very careful. When you finish to distress the edges, you will notice the mess on your work surface. I have a very useful friend, the portable vacuum cleaner, which saves my life all the time, especially those rare times where I feel brave and don't caring of the danger I bring out to glitters to work with them. A perfect old page has curled edges and even few scratches here and there. Then I curl the two corners on themselves. Before continuing the aging process I'm going to add more texture in my background. With this uh, floral stencil by Tim Holtz, I'm spreading a white texture paste using uh, a spatula. Mm -hmm. 
In my opinion, the texture paste is not white enough and doesn't pop up against the background. This because I used no permanent colors uh, on my background. It does mean that the texture paste can be absorb them. So when dry, I gonna fix it coloring the paste with a white acrylic paint and a very very thin brush. Now I'm going to add some dark blue on my background. I'm using a partial stencil technique just to add some soft blue interest here and there. It's time to work on the frame. To cover all the mess of the previous applications, I'm going to apply a generous layer of white acrylic gesso. I'm going to put gesso only along the edges because the center of the pages will be covered up anyway. For a great vintage look, I cannot avoid to use a brown ink, so I'm coloring the frame with my sepia archival ink. And with the same stencil I have used with the dark blue, I'm also adding some sepia color on the background. To help the colors pop up even more, I'm going to darken up the edges using a blending tool and my black suit distress ink. Then I'm going to add the last details on my frame by stamping the handle right and text stamp with the safety archival ink. While I'm stamping I'd like to remind you that you can find all the supplies I'm using today in the description box as well as on my blog. Finally I can glue the pages together using a gel medium and a palette knife just because I'm lazy and I don't want one more brush to clean up. My background is finished. For my focal point I will use this die set by C6 Tim Holtz. This page was inspired by the branch die and it will be the first of the series when I will create the same scene that will change according to the season, so this will be the interpretation of spring. I'm going to die cut two branches and a bunch of flowers and leaves. I have used the watercolor paper again because I'm going to color all the die cut with the aquaflow pens. I have die cut the flowers and the leaves with the two smallest dies for each one. For the branches I'm using a brown and a very dark red. For the flowers I have chosen two shades of pink. I'm gonna create a cherry flowers look more or less. For the leaves I'm using two shades of green. And these are the result, the branches, the leaves and the flowers. I'm going to glue the branches with my liquid glue by Nuvo, one of them on the left page and the other one on the top right page, making sure that it come out from the little crack. I decided to apply this product all over my pages. It's a kind of oily gel like Vaseline. Someone says in fact you can use it instead. 
but uh, I have uh, never tried. The distress glaze make the surface waterproof. So now I able to use any technique without smudge or move uh, any color. I'm also going to give a vintage look to all my elements using a sepia archival ink. Now I'm gonna emboss my flowers and leaves to give them a more realistic look. I'm using a modeling set by Heartfelt. So I realized that uh, it uh, will be useless since when I will close my art journal everything will get totally flat. <laughs> Never mind, I really like the shape of the flowers. Now I'm going to decide where everything is going to go and then I glue everything down with my Nouveau Deluxe glue. With uh, watercolor markers I'm going to create some shadows all around the element. Adding shadows bring everything together. All focal point element and the background will be part of the same scene. I'm using two shades of blue. The darkest one immediately near to the edges of the subject and uh, blending it with the lighter one. I also blend the shadows with my fingers, a brush or a piece of kitchen paper. I have decided to add other elements to my focal point, a bird house and a sweet little bird to dice of this adorable set from Tonic Studios Craft Kit number 14. They are monthly kit for which I have already posted a few videos on my channel, including unboxing and card making tutorial using the product inside them. Coming back to us, I die cut the bird house on watercolor paper. So I'm coloring uh, it using the Aquaflow pens again. In particular, I'm using three browns, so being uh, a wooden uh, little house. This is the little bird cut out on watercolor paper as well and I'm coloring it using browns with a dark red shade. I don't show you the whole coloring process because I'm not a watercolorist and I don't follow any rules honestly. After all it is an art journal and you can get fun without setting limits due to knowledge or skills. With this uh, Utah twine I will hang the little house on the branch and these uh, simple details will give a different texture to your creation and will make it really special. Realizing that uh, see the background through the little hole is uh, unrealistic I'm going to color this uh, piece of paper with a black marker and I will stick it on the back of the bird house. Here is another good reason to leaving empty the next and the previous pages. I'm going to create two holes using the mat of uh, this set, so I will be able to tie the birdhouse to the branch with the twine. With uh, liquid glue 
I stick uh, the house and the twine nice and tight and uh, with the blues water color marker pants I'm adding the shadows now the cute bird that I finished drawing the wing can rest on his little house okay we have branches in bloom and the chipping bird what is missing butterflies it is not a spring without I think I'm gonna use two dies from the Tony Craft Kit number 29 dot and drop butterfly die set you can use any die or stamp that you have or hand draw it or print a picture from the internet as well as the bird house, the little bird, the branches, the flowers and the leaves. Using the Aquaflow pens by Nuvo I'm coloring the butterflies. I'm going to color one butterfly using a orange for the darkest color and a yellow for the lightest one. For the other one I'm going to use two shades of pink. Then I'm going to define the bodies with a black alcohol marker. I'm not going for a main quote this time. I will use this foam alphabet stamp set by Tim Holtz and I'm going to spell the word spring. As ink I will use the Versafine Onyx Black that is perfect for sentiment. As you can see the stamp is quite nice and crisp. At the first moment I thought of using this cheap bodice but I've changed my mind because actually I don't like how it looks so even for this I used the phone stamp Where I didn't get a perfect impression I go back to fix the gaps with a black marker with no problem at all Since my little bird is chirping, I'm going to add a few music notes from this stamp set I bought at the Lidl. The page are not very smooth and I didn't get a crisp stamp here, so I'm going to fix it with a black pen. Using the same black pen I'm going to draw two stitch flight line for the butterflies. Then I'm going to stick down my butterflies using a foam pad to add a nice dimension. I'm also using liquid glue to be sure that all stay in place. I wrote and printed three small sentences and now I'm going to cut them out into fine strip with my guillotine. Using the sepia archival ink I'm gonna give a vintage look to the strip as well. I'm blending uh, the ink with a sponge just at the edges. So I'm gonna glue the sentences. I'm going to stick the first one that says little bird chirping close to the bird house. The second one that says flowers blooming on the branches is going to go at the very top of the right page, close to the branch. The third sentence says butterflies spreading their wings and I'm going to stick it below the pink butterfly. Using again the two blue shades of watercolor markers, I'm going to add the shadows all around the sentences and the word spring, blending with a brush or with my fingers. Now with my Signo white gel pen, I'm gonna sketch the highlight all over the element of my focal point, as well as on the word spring. I don't follow any rules about light and shadows, I just uh, sketch white lines here and there. Maybe the only rule that uh, I'm applying is to draw the most of the lines on the top left of the subject.
blooming flowers, I can stay away from the crystal drops by Nuvo. So I'm going to put uh, drops at the center of my flowers using uh, this uh, pale orange crystal drop. They are the finishing touches. I plan to create in the future the same scene, changing it according to the seasons. The main element will be always the branches, maybe I will leave uh, even the bird house. I hope you enjoyed the video and got inspired to create your spring page. If you wish, you can send me some photos about your interpretation of the spring on Instagram or Facebook. So thank you for joining me today, don't forget to subscribe and leave me a chirping thumb up if you like the video. See you next time and be colorful!